Hello everyone and welcome to another Tales of Crystoria video with me as a hell. Today we are diving into the Veteran Ties event, talking all about this event. We're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the absolute ugh about this event. But before we get into the content, I do want to say thank you all so much for the support you've given me. We hit 140 subscribers. And looking forward to continuing to grow the channel. We will can be continuing to do uh, videos on Tales of Gristoria. We'll be continuing to do Tales of Gristoria streams. Next month, we're going to start Tales of Arise streams. So stay tuned for that, guys, because we got Tales of Arise coming out next month. Super excited for it. Also, um, before we do dive into this content, I also want to say... Um, it, just give out the daily guild PSA. My guild Tales Inferno is recruiting. If you are looking for a guild, an active guild to join in on, we are resurrecting our guild. We're guild rank 31, looking to continue to boost it up. So uh, hit me up with a DM in Discord or Reddit if you want to join the guild, and I will have to send you an invite because our guild is bugged and won't let people request to be in, uh, into the guild. So that is your daily guild PSA, and once again, thank you all so much, and make sure to go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below on what you think about the Veteran Ties event, or what you think about my opinions about, and comments about this event. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. One of the first things that I do want to do here is actually take a look at the codex. And go take a look at Saray here and his full kit. All right, so one of the things here about Saray, we're gonna break this down. We're gonna talk about what's good about this kit, what is bad about this kit, and just what what is just absolutely frustrating and just ugh, about this kit. So let's let's talk about this here. So this is what it's showing at max awakening transcendence and max level. So he has 36,000 HP, 4,560 attack, and 4,200 defense. He's got decent overall stats. Like, it's just overall across the board. It's not super high attack. It's not super high defense. It's not super high HP. It's um, pretty... It's still got high attack and high defense. So he has low HP. But his, um, but it's just kind of overall stats, just all across the board, just mid stats. So, I mean, that's good. That's good that he has those overall stats. Another good thing is his awakening skill, skill gives plus 30% attack to sword type allies. That's pretty good. It is a good thing. Um, one of the other thing, good things I want to point out about his kit here is his mystic art does 80 hits. You get a whole 80 hits there on his mystic art. That is a lot. It is a single target mystic art, so you're only going to get 80 no matter what, but that is 80. And remember, you do have to get him to max awakening to get the full 80 hits. Uh, without max awakening, I believe it's only 20 or 30 hits, so it's pretty low. doesn't really give you that much of a boost. One of the other good things is he gets 22 hits at max level on level 8 of Arts 2, Sword Rain Alpha. So he can get a total of 102 hits in a turn when he's completely and fully maxed out. Uh, so what is bad about this kit? One of the things that you know is bad about this kit right now is that it's fully single target. Everything is hit, hits one enemy. I mean, it's not that's not totally inherently bad, but with all of the AOE units that we've just gotten, AOE hit gen units we've just gotten. Uh, when you have AOE quests or, and things like that, he's he falls behind in the hit gen because unit there are other units that can do more hit gen just because of the amount of hits they can do to AOE um, and to all enemies. So his hit gen kind of falls behind because he is single target. Uh, he has a 360 over limit gauge, which means it takes forever to get his mystic art up going into a uh, wind or sorry going into a fire quest it can take four to five turns 
to get his mystic art if you don't crit it takes five turns sometimes even six if you don't get lucky you know things like that but it takes forever to get his mystic art so that's one of the things is it's hard to um, just do an all-out attack because you have to wait and wait and wait for his mystic art in order to get that 102 hits his defense down on his um, Sword Rain Alpha is one turn. It lasts one turn. It's on a five turn cooldown. Uh, that is one thing I didn't mention on what is good is he does have a defense down. It is, it's a 30% defense down to one enemy. But what's bad about it is it only lasts one turn and it's on a five turn cooldown. Now what is just absolutely uh about this kit? One of the things that just makes me just go uh about his kit is he has his overall stats they're, I mean, their stats, they're just overall, they're decent all across the board, right? His mystic, his awakening skill does 30% attack to sword type allies. Now, there are a lot of sword units in the game, so that's not inherently bad, but it just, it makes his hit gen, and it makes him so niche, because he's a water sword unit, his plus 30% attack to sword type allies. So you want to try to, he can only really benefit, like, water teams going into full fire quests or sword teams and that's really all that he can really benefit and it's just it's just so niche it's just weird but um one of the other things that is just so just frustrating about his kit is his weak damage scaling like sure he has 4560 attack but his mystic heart does 70 percent damage his art one does 155 percent damage his art two does 130 percent damage is extremely weak damage scaling so even though he has decently high attack he does hardly any damage except um so except when you're able to just land a full combo like it, he still just hardly does any damage with crits now his transcendence board does compensate for some of the issues in his kit some of the bad things and the just frustrating things like for example, he gained and one of the things in his transcendence board is he can gain 25 over limit when he's attacked. He also gets plus 50% attack when he's at 100 HP, 100% HP or above. So his transcendence board kind of contradicts itself because you want him to get attacked so you can get his mystic art off more often and faster because of the over limit. But then he also loses his attack buff when he is below 100% HP. So he loses 50% attack buff when he gets hit, but then you get his over limit gauge up faster and gives Mystic Art faster. It's it's just kind of inconsistent with like that. One of the things that helps uh, with his damage issue and his weak damage scaling is he gets plus 210% damage to buffs disabled enemies. But one of the issues about this is there's only four units in the entire game that currently can disable buffs that can use the dispel uh, de debuff that would be Miklio, Douse, Alvin, and EX Gaius. They're the only units in the entire game that use dispel. Miklio is good because he's a water unit but he's staff. Douse is a light arts unit does not fit in with Saray like hardly at all and Alvin is an earth gun unit also does not really fit in well with Saray. However, EX Gaius is a water sword unit, so he is perfect with Saray. They can work in tandem so well together to just dish out a lot, lots and a ton of damage. So, um, EX Gaius is, if you have EX Gaius, man, Saray Shepherd in Black is perfect for you. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about with his kit. So, now let's go talk about the event. Let's claim this real quick. Let's go talk about the event. All right. So in regards to the missions, there are some mi event missions for this event that you can get some gleamstones from. Fully awakening him, doing the step missions and everything, it gets you about 1,350 gleamstones. Okay. We're going to be doing some math here, guys. We're going to be running through some math in order to show you why I think this event was a bad idea. 
I think it was a good idea at first, but they turned it into a bad idea with, with the layout of the event. So let's get into this, let's talk about this. I'm gonna take it slow, a little bit slower so we can follow through this, guys. Okay, so the event layout. First off, you start off with these level up quests. This is before you obtain Saray, right? You start off with these level up quests. There are six of them. They each cost 20 AP, it's one per element. Now, if you use Saray as a support for each of these quests, you can then obtain Saray as an ally. That'll fully fill up that bond meter. This is good. This is really, really cool. I really like this idea in obtaining an ally this in this manner. It's really cool. So your total um, cost to obtain him is going to be 120 AP. So you, once you spend 120 AP, you got Saray, you're good. He's, he's yours. And you get 60 Gleamstones out of it because you only have to clear the quest and you get 10 Gleamstones. So you get 60 Gleamstones out of those level up quests. But then, then things start to heat up in the quest. That goes from zero to 100 real quick. Because uh, once you thin, once you get Saray, you can only get him up to level 50. You then have to clear ascension quests in order to even ascend him and, and level him up. So you have to clear 60 quests per ascension level. So if you wanna get him to level 60, just even to ascend him once to get him to level 60, you have to clear 60 quests. There are 10 per element and they each cost 20 AP. So in order to get Saray to level 100, you have to clear 300 total quests at 20 AP apiece. So just to get Saray to level 100, you have to spend a total of 6,000 AP. You do get 3,000 Gleamstones from it, but you have to spend 6,000 AP. Now at max rank, guys, at rank 100, your stamina, your AP, maxes out at 174. That's a lot of AP just to get Saray to level 100. Now after you get him to level 100, you then unlock his ascension board. Now in order to get his get through his ascension board, you have to first unlock eight panels, and then you have to lock on 18 panels, and then you have to unlock the full ascension board from there. And you have quests that you can only attempt these quests to get up to eight panels and then attempt the quest to get up to 18 panels. So now a little bit of disclaimer, I did this from my memory because I can't go back and see what my, what the um, a number of ascension quests was for the ascension board. But I do remember that for eight panels, you had to do around 24 quests and they cost 25 AP per quest. So you spent about 600 AP to unlock eight of his ascension board panels, and you got about 240 gleamstones from it. And then to unlock the uh, 18 panels, you had to do 36 quests, which cost 30 AP a piece. So you spent about 1,080 AP, and you got 360 gleamstones. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna put some gameplay on in the background here. And then to unlock the full ascension board, you had to you had to do 60 total quests at 35 AP cost for a total of 2,100 AP, and you got 600 gleamstones from it. So for a full ascension, in order to fully max out Saray, Shepherd in Black, you had or fully ascend him, you had to do 3,780 AP worth. And, get a th and you got 1,200 Gleamstones from it. So we're already up to 9,900 um, AP just to fully ascend Saray here. Now, that's not even all that is up with this quest. Not even everything about it. So once we have her max ascended, we unlock the Transcendence Board which we have to complete in order to do the awakening quest to even awaken Saray. So that's right, we haven't even been able to awaken him yet. So he, his mystic art is locked in at about 20 or 30 hits, and it's locked in at really, really poor damage. So he just, he's not a great unit yet. So, um, when the, before the T-board is completed, the transcendence board, Saray is, Average. He's an average unit at best. 
once you complete that transcendence board, he becomes decent at best. He doesn't really get really good or, you know, mediocre in most comps, but amazing in the right comp until his awakening is completed. And you can't even start awakening him until you unlock the entire transcendence board. So in order to unlock the transcendence board, you have to do 180 transcendence board quests at 40 AP cost per quest. So that's a total of 7,200 AP, and you get 1,800 free gleamstones from it. So the, the AP cost just continues to go up, guys, and you just have to do a ton to get this uh, unit maxed out. Now, once you finish those Transcendence quests, you still are not done yet, because the Awakening uh, is also unlocked by doing more quests. There are a total of 50 Awakening quests, and they each cost 50 AP. So you're going to spend a total of 2,500 AP and get 500 Gleamstones uh, from those quests just to fully max them out. So that is the entire quest. Entire uh, limited quest right there. The entire event. So let's break it down. Let's give us some final numbers here, and then we're going to take a look at what this truly costs you. So the total AP cost to fully max out Saray, Sh Shepard, and Black is 19,600 AP. That is a lot of AP. You do get lots of Gleamstones from this quest. This is one redeeming factor. This is the good part is the total Gleamstones you get from missions in the quest combined is 7,910. So you get about three multis worth of Gleamstones. Which is really, really good. But also, it's just so, so low um, compared to, you know, what we would normally get clearing this amount of quests. Because you only get 10 Gleamstones a quest instead of 30. So let's break down the AP cost, right? So I mentioned this before, at maximum AP, which is 174, it's going to take you a total of about 113 full bars of AP, roughly. So if you were to do one full bar of AP per day on this quest, it would take 113 days, which is approximately four months to max him out. Now this doesn't factor in the individual costs that don't equal a full AP bar. For example, um, four of the Transcendence board quests is 160 AP, so that doesn't equal the total 174. And three Awakening quests equals 150 AP. So in order to, you know, so you have to refresh your AP before you even use all of your AP. So you're actually refreshing more often than uh, 113 times, but this is just a rough estimation of how much AP it truly costs. So it's about 113 full bars. So it's going to take you roughly 113 100% AP gels to fully max in, or it'll take you 654 plus 30 AP gels, or 1960 plus 10 AP gels. So it's going to take a lot of gels. Now, Let's take a look at what is the approximate Gleamstone cost for these gels. Because you can't, you do get some free gels, but it's a long stack up process to get those free gels. So let's take a look at what, how much AP, or Gleamstones, these AP gels will cost you. So if you were to get 113 100% AP gels from the daily exchange, so from doing the Gleamstone exchange daily for the daily quest support pack, that's going to cost you about 1,520 Gleamstones. You're going to have to exchange, do that exchange for 38 days in order to get 113 gels. So your net gain of Gleamstones is going to be about 6,390 in that case, which will only afford you two total multiples. There is some alternatives here. You can use limited summons, medals, and turtles medals for gels. This will cost you a lot more Gleams. We'll take a look at this right now. So limited summons for plus 30 AP gels, it's one metal equals one plus 30 AP gel. So you have to do 20, you get 24 metals per 
full step up run and you have to spend 10,000 gleamstones per step up run. You need 654 uh, gels, which means you need 654 medals. That is around 27 and a quarter step ups uh, run, the full run. So that's going to cost you roughly around 272,500 greenstones for 654 plus 30 AP gels. Just going through the limited summons. So you're going to lose approximately 264,590 greenstones uh, going about that manner. You can spend less if you factor in the 4 plus 30 AP gels you get from the time box, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. Now. Uh, getting the 100% AP gels from Turtles Metals is also going to cost you a decent amount of Gleamstones. Um, you get, it's three Turtles Metals for three 100% AP gels, so essentially one metal, one Turtles Metal equals one 100% AP gel. So one metal equals, uh, one Summon Metal equals one Turtles Metal. So you need 113 Summon Metals, so you technically have to do 113 Summons. So that's going to be 28,250 worth of Gleamstones in summons. So you're going to lose around 20,340 Gleamstones um, from what you gain from the quest, getting the gels needed to max out Saray. You can spend also spend less if you do the daily quest support pack each day for the 40 Gleams. Or um, you can just refresh using Gleamstones. So 113 refreshes using Gleamstones, it costs you 40 Gleamstones per refresh. So that's going to cost you a total of 4,520 Gleamstones. So this is the cheapest option by far besides just doing the daily um, quest support pack exchange for the Gleamstones at 40 Gleamstones per day. This is by far the cheapest option. However, it really reduces your net gleamstone gain from the quest from the event because you're only going to get 3390 gleamstones which is only going to afford you one extra multi plus a couple of extra gleamstones about 800 extra gleamstones so it to me that's not really worth it if i have to run through an absurd amount of quests um and spend 19,600 AP, I want a little bit more than just one multi's worth of Gleamstones. So that's why I still haven't finished Stray yet because I'm refusing to refresh using Gleamstones because I want the Gleamstone gain. So in conclusion with this guys, you could potentially sink four months into maxing this unit for the niche hit gen unit where he benefits sword units and pairs extremely well with one specific unit and you can only re you could receive only three times multis for four months worth of effort now my only question is is this event really worth running for all of that ap not particularly in my opinion, it is not particularly worth running this event. However, Serave right now is going to be a good unit. So the sooner you can max him out, the better. But putting four months worth of effort in for in such a sh short amount of time for just three multi multi pulls is not really worth it. And I think Bandai Namco messed up a little bit with this event. It started off fantastic. It's a great idea. I think the idea was great, but I think they messed up because they overestimated the, the costs of these quests or the number of quests that we had to run or the reward that we get from the quests. Like they, they needed to do one of three things, either lessen the AP cost of the quests or reduce the number of quests or make the rewards greater for clearing the quests. Those three things, any one of those three things would have made this quest a little more worth it. But right now, the way it stands, it's not really worth all that much. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I know it was a long one. I do apologize, even though it was long. Um, 
I do would appreciate it if you guys would leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment what you think below about the Veteran Ties event. So it was a long one guys, but still not as long as it takes to max out Saray. Peace.